Hey everybody, it's Tracy from Science Buddies. Welcome to our hands-on coding tutorial on the Minimax algorithm. We will be showing you how the Minimax algorithm works in code in a familiar game, Tic-Tac-Toe. We will be experimenting with adjusting the depth that the algorithm explores to see how that influences the decisions that the AI makes. We'll start off with showing you how to use Google Colab. Then we'll step through each of the steps of the project together. Remember that you can find all project details as well as the starter code in the description below. First off, I'll be showing you how to use Google Colab, which is a platform that allows you to write, run, and share code. You can run each cell by either clicking on this play button here, or by clicking on the cell and pressing Control Enter, or Command Enter if you're on a MacBook. You can tell the cell has been run when you see the output here, or by this green check mark here. Note, if you get a notice like this saying that the runtime has disconnected, click reconnect, then run all the cells again. You can run everything again by clicking on the runtime, then run all. And if you want to run everything up until the cell that you're working on, you can also click on the cell, then click runtime and run before. You can add cells by clicking on this button on the upper left here and delete it by clicking on the trash icon to the right of each cell. If you accidentally delete a cell, you can undo it by pressing Ctrl M Z on your keyboard. To create our tic-tac-toe game, we'll first have to create our board. We have already provided the code for displaying the board, so all you need to do for this cell is run it. To represent the tic-tac-toe board, we are going to use a nested list, which means there's a list in a list. For tic-tac-toe, we want three rows and three columns which is what these numbers represent. We can see what the board looks like by running this cell. And we can now see this is what the tic-tac-toe board looks like. We have provided the other helper functions that will play a role in running our game. We have this check win function, which checks if a player has won the game. This is draw function, which checks if the game ended in a draw. And of course, a function called player move, which will allow us to play against the AI player. To make these functions available in the game, all you have to do is run all three of these cells. Now that our other game functions are set up, we can now move on to creating the Minimax AI player. To learn more about the Minimax algorithm and how it makes decisions in two-player turn-taking games, check out our Minimax algorithm conceptual video in the description below. The Minimax algorithm assigns values to different game states based on the desirability for the AI player O. If a game state results in the opposing player winning, it has a value of negative 1, indicating an unfavorable outcome for the AI player. On the other hand, if the AI player wins in a particular state, the value is set to plus 1, signifying a favorable outcome for the AI. A game state resulting in a draw or reaching the specified maximum depth is assigned a neutral value of 0. If it is the AI player's turn, and in this case the maximizing player, the algorithm initializes the maximum evaluation score to negative infinity and iterates through all the empty spaces on the board. For each empty space, it simulates the AI player's move, recursively calls the minimax function for the next level with the minimizing player's turn, and updates the maximum evaluation score accordingly. This process is repeated for all possible moves, and the algorithm returns the best score for the AI player. If it's the human player's turn or the minimizing player, the algorithm initializes the minimum evaluation score to positive infinity and follows a similar process. It simulates the human player's move, x, recursively, calls the minimax function for the next level with the maximizing player's turn, and updates the minimum evaluation score. The algorithm returns the best score for the human player. This function will return a value for the current state of the board, which serves as a helper function for our next function, AI move which uses the minimax function to find a move associated with its highest value. It's worth noting that if all explored states in a given turn result in a neutral value of 0, the algorithm will effectively return a random move, as it doesn't have a clear preference among those states. For this section, you can just run the code. After running all the previous cells, the game is now ready to play. To play the game, you can just run this main function. There is no need to run the previous cells again as you play more games. You can see here that you can experiment with changing the depth that the algorithm explores, and right now it is set to 0. Let's play against our AI player. To choose your move, you enter the row and column where you want to put the X. Remember that both rows and columns start counting at 0. 
After you go, press enter for the AI to go. You can see that since the AI is not looking ahead in the game tree, it does not make any attempt to block me, and I can win easily. Now, let's try adjusting the depth that the AI player explores to 8. Note that this is the max, since there are only 9 moves in tic-tac-toe and the human player goes first. See how this time the AI player actively makes sure that the human player does not win. It is now making strategic moves at a depth of 8 compared to when it was only exploring at a depth of 0. Have fun testing out different depth levels and make sure to keep track of wins and losses. And with that we come to the end of this coding tutorial. Remember that you can find written instructions and example code for this project linked in the video description. For over a thousand other projects for all areas of science and engineering, visit our website www.sciencebuddies.org.